Hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Aces High. Uh, today I'm bringing you guys something British. So, in the past, I have done uh, weird things that Americans do. You guys can go check out that video. Or even weird things that Europeans do. I thought it might be kind of fun. I have a lot of you viewers that are actually British. So, I'm going to do weird, 20 weird things that only British people do. Uh, let me know how many of these are actually true, how many are kind of stretch truth, how many are just full out lies. Um, so this channel today is going to be English with Lucy. She, uh, I did watch the first, I don't know, 30 seconds or so and I realized she has a big old ad at the beginning. So I skipped about two minutes in until the ad was done. Other than that, I haven't seen any of the video. Um, and she, yeah, I mean, she seems like hopefully she'll have an accurate representation of uh, the weird things that y'all do. Anyway. Uh, if you guys are new to my channel, hit that like button, hit that sub button, help me out, stick around. I do post videos almost every day. I've been a little busy the last few days, so I've missed a couple days, um, but for the most part, I post them. Anyway, I'm going to sit back, I'm going to shut up, go grab yourself a drink, and let's get watching. 20 weird things that British people tend to do. Okay, so the first one is that we put carpet in our bathrooms not Why? everyone does this but i am currently living in a house that has a carpeted bathroom why why D is that really common at all that's ridiculous you would never see that in the u.s at least what about like if the toilet gets clogged and floods or you step out of the shower and it soaks through the towel or anything man there's so much water in the bathroom why would you have carpet that's like a way to get mold and just nastiness oh and i will let you know that yes we have had an overflow situation with that toilet and in a carpeted bathroom it wasn't pretty so yeah. this is quite an old-fashioned thing to do we don't tend to do this anymore but if you okay. go to a house that hasn't been renovated or updated in a long while or you go to the home of somebody who is very traditional then yes you might find carpet in your bathroom we've got it here it wasn't my choice but it's here uh, my grandparents have got <clears throat> carpeted bathrooms as well number two is way okay and this is something that we shout but like way in a too very, far very specific situation which is this when somebody smashes a glass in a pub the whole pub should shout way sorry i had to re-record that that was so loud <laughs> now i worked as a waitress for three years i dropped a fair few glasses we had to carry these drinks on tiny round trays that you had to balance. I couldn't do that. So I've had my fair share of ways in my lifetime. <laughs> all right. So that's just a fun bar thing. I could see that uh, all over the world. We have different things like that. Now, my mother's best friend forgot where she was once. And she did the were in Portugal, <laughs> a restaurant in Portugal, some poor, poor waiter dropped a load of glasses they smashed everywhere and there was just my mum's best friend there on her own shouting way <laughs> okay the next one is number three which right. is excitement over fireworks on bonfire night so on the 5th of november all around the uk we have bonfires we let off fireworks oh, that's we cool. do this because it's the anniversary the 5th of november of a failed attempt to blow up, to explode, uh, the Houses of Parliament. On this event, we mm. burn guys, and these are dummy men used to represent the man who was going to blow up the Houses of Parliament. He was called Guy Fawkes, so sometimes we call it Guy Fawkes Night as well. Okay, that's actually really cool. I'd love to watch a video on that. Um, also, weird spot to pause on her. Uh, but anyway... Uh... I don't think that's really that weird. Everybody has ridiculous ex excitement over fireworks. I mean, there's something about blowing up some fireworks or just watching the explosions in the sky, the beautiful colors, the sounds. The, I mean, you're not around that all the time, you know? It's just, it's a lot of fun. Now, on this night or on the evening surrounding this night, depending when it falls, if it falls on a Monday, then you might have it on the Saturday before, for example. People who have no experience or business dealing with explosives get incredibly excited they go to firework shops they do them in their garden and it's just really dangerous <laughs> my dad yeah i mean 
it's the same thing in the U.S. I understand people talk about, oh, all the U.S. people have guns. I don't have a gun. Half my friends don't have guns, okay? It's that some people have 12 guns, and it makes the national average much higher. That being said, uh, I mean, we, we have this. We go down to the fireworks shops for the 4th of July, our Independence Day, and for New Year's. Those are the two times of the year where you can buy fireworks, and you go and you blow them up, and you have way too much fun for no good reason other than, hey, normally I can't blow up explosives, but tonight it's loud, and it's beautiful, and it's fun, and dangerous, like she said. I'd always really enjoyed setting up the fireworks and setting them off in a neighbor's garden, and my mother was always absolutely petrified she was so scared he was going to get hurt and rightly so and one day they played this terrible prank on my mother and all of the other worried shoot wives. a bottle rocket at him <laughs> they let off a load of fireworks and then they came screaming covered with soot with black ashes all over their face as if they had had the explosion in their face and the women went crazy <laughs> and they were not best pleased to find out it was all a joke number four <laughs> We think That's a good one. <laughs> that a cup of tea will cure or help at least any bad situation. Oh, that's got to be an old wives' tale. Genuinely believe this. When something bad happens, our first response is, "Okay, I'll put the kettle on." If somebody's told you some devastating news and you don't know what to say, you can just say, "That's awful. Do you want a cup of tea?" <laughs> Number five is the phrase, "Oh, go on then." Okay, said like this. I've heard that. Go on then. Uh, this is something that we say when we are offered something that we know we shouldn't have. For example, a very unhealthy food or maybe a cigarette or a drink of alcohol. When somebody offers you something naughty or considered to be naughty, go on then. Go on then. <laughs> I wonder if you have a similar phrase in your own language. I would love to hear it because I think that's just such a key phrase in our vocabulary number six colin the caterpillar cake need i say more yes I yes need to say more yes so that my viewers understand oh my god 100 percent. you need to say more listen man i'm not british colin the caterpillar cake i have zero idea what the hell that is any british person watching this will understand colin the caterpillar cake they will probably feel excitement running through their veins okay a Colin the Caterpillar cake is a long chocolate roll. I think that's what you call it. It's a <laughs> roll of cake covered in chocolate with the face of a caterpillar on the end. And if it was your birthday at school, your mum would buy you a Colin the Caterpillar cake. It was very easy to slice and lots of slices for all of the children. And if it was your birthday, you got to eat the face. I remember my first <laughs> Colin the Caterpillar okay. cake. I remember being I like served it. the face of this cake and I remember it being disgusting, but I ate it anyway because it was my birthday and because I'd earned it and I'd spent the whole year watching everyone else eat their caterpillar faces. <laughs> These are typically sold in Marks and Spencers, a shop here, food shop here, quite a posh shoot food shop here, as far mm. as I'm aware. And if you ever go to a British person's birthday party, I, I really think you should bring one. It will make them so excited. Probably. <laughs> Number seven, something else we find ridiculously exciting, way more exciting than it should be, J2Os. <laughs> I don't know what? if you have these in other countries, but they are a non-alcoholic juice drink. Not juice, okay. juice drink, okay? That means it's not 100% juice. Trust me, we know not 100% juice. There's a lot of healthy things in America, but there are so many unhealthy things. And we know that artificial juice, that juice drink, or that purple drink, or that orange drink, you know? The most famous flavor is orange and passion fruit. But the thing is, they came in glass bottles that were the same size as beer bottles. So when you were a child and you were at a party, it was huge. An adult party, you could feel like an adult with a similar beer bottle. In the U.S., uh, we had a lot of Mexican... Uh, uh, fruit drinks that were like that. They would come in the same size as a beer bottle. And as a kid, it just felt so cool. And it was real sugar. It wasn't that artificial crap. And, you know, it was just, uh, it felt cool to drink out of that. Very exciting. I remember taking it a step too far when I was younger and taking <laughs> my parents' beer bottles that were green, Stella Artois always, uh, oh, and God, refilling Stella. them with apple juice. 
and carrying that round with me and completely confused when my parents were so angry with me and saying, no, Lucy, don't do that, don't do that. Uh, let me clarify, I have nothing wrong with Stella, it's just not my favorite beer. I come from a, I understand that America is known for, oh, they're Budweiser and Bud Light and all that. I come from the part of America that, uh, I mean, it's one of the largest places in the world for craft beers. Uh, the Northwest, you know, Bend, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, that type of thing. And we just, we have a lot of really, really strong IPAs and, and uh, dark ambers and just Pilsners and all kinds of really good beers. We also had another drink called Schler, which was alcohol free, um, like a sweet grape juice, fizzy as well. And I felt like such an adult when I had a glass of Schler at Christmas. Do you <laughs> have any drinks that you used to have as a child that made you feel grown up. Better. Yeah, I just talked about number mine. Number eight is the phrase to pop. Okay. <laughs> Round over out. Sounds down, a bit random, up. but what? we use pop in many phrasal verbs. Um, so if before she gets into how you British people use it, to pop means like, uh, man, that that dress really pops. Uh, it, it's over the top, you know. It really pops out. That color really pops out on you. Uh, something like that, you know. Man, you really make, or that, that dress really makes you your outfit pop. Or something like that, you know. It's just something to kind of stand out above the rest, if that makes sense. And it's a very warm way of asking somebody to come or go somewhere. Do you want me to pop over? Do you want me to come over? It implies a short amount of time. Why okay, I've heard that actually. For a coffee? Why don't we just quickly go down the road for a coffee? I remember one of my Spanish students in London, they were au pairing for a British family and they were so confused by the word pop because you can pop around, pop up, pop down, pop over. Just treat it as come and go. Number yeah. nine, British people like to base the entire country's economic state on the price inflation of a frog shaped chocolate bar called a freddo yes you heard that correctly we base our economics on a frog shaped chocolate bar called a freddo when we were young freddos were known to be the most affordable chocolate bar they were a little frog and they were typically i think 10p when i was young i remember being Yeah, but it's made by Cadbury. Do you guys like Cadbury? So they have like the Cadbury eggs and Cadbury bars and all that. I've never been a big fan. I'm given a pound to spend on sweets at a party. I could have one big packet of sweets or I could have 10 Freddos. The logical answer is to go for all of the Freddos. However, every time I see the price of a Freddo rise, I am outraged, and the rest of the nation is too. I'm gonna to search now, current price of Freddo's. 25p. 25p. So what? Okay, just going to have to pause there. I got so angry about the price and inflation of Freddo's that I broke my microphone, and the next three videos <laughs> have terrible audio. Damn you, Freddo's. That means that I could have bought 10 and now I can only buy four. That is outrageous. <sighs> okay, number 10, pigs in blankets. All right, it's a little quieter we since that, so, so I'm gonna turn it up. excited about this particular food called a pig in blanket. Yeah, I know a pig in a blanket. Uh, I mean, it's, it's something cool. It's something you bring over to like barbecues or whatever. It is. Um, I didn't realize that, and I'm assuming because of how excited she's getting, that it's a British, uh, of, of British ancestry. I just never really thought about where it came from. Little cocktail sausage wrapped in bacon. And typically we only have them at Christmas. But there's no reason for this. We could. I've seen, uh, and I know that this is probably the typical way, but I've seen little sausages wrapped in bacon. I've seen them wrapped in like a breading, like a roll around the edge. I've seen them wrapped in a bread with bacon around it, like. I've seen a few different ways. You'd have them every Sunday, but if you go to a pub and your Sunday roast comes with a pig in blanket or some pigs in blankets, it's the best roast ever. We absolutely hmm. love them, but we only have them at Christmas. Why is that? Number 11, one of our most popular TV shows is a TV show of people watching TV shows. <laughs> it's 
called Gogglebox. I imagine this concept has arrived in other countries now. I've Basically never heard of it. film families watching the TV highlights and then they compile their witty remarks and then we watch them. It, it, it's a very good program. It's very, um... <laughs> you know what she's basically saying? I understand she's talking about TV and people watching TV and re reacting to it. Uh, I have a YouTube reaction channel. You know how similar that is? Gosh dang it. Yes, I have heard of this type of thing. Meta. Mm. Number 12. Dog poo in Facebook groups. Okay. In the UK, and I imagine in lots of places in the world, we have Facebook groups for our local community. So I'm in quite a few of the yeah. surrounding villages and towns. And there is a new phenomenon, and it is the people that are getting so frustrated with people not picking up their dog poo, especially if it's on someone's property or on their front lawn. People are taking to taking pictures of the dog poo and posting it in these community groups. I don't know about you, but I normally check my phone for the first time in the morning when I'm about to take my first bite of breakfast, normally porridge, and to have porridge approaching my mouth, opening my phone and seeing a massive dog poo. Is Interesting. How many of you guys actually eat porridge for breakfast? Like, seriously. Um, I, I know that porridge, cream of wheat, grits, they're not too terribly different, um, but I mean... I love a, a good uh, bowl of cream uh, cream of wheat uh, or of grits in uh, in the morning. I really do. It's just not ideal. So now people are rebelling against the dog poo posters. Yeah, because they're stupid. And there is just oh, there's just huge civil unrest online at the moment. Those who want to shame the dog poo leavers and those who want to shame the dog poo posters. It's very complex. Good. Um, I hate dog poo. It's absolutely horrendous. But I'm never going to take a picture of it. I see it all over my Facebook timeline. I've, I've seen enough. We know it's a problem. Exactly. Number 13, drinking in rounds, okay? When we go on a night out with a group of friends, we drink in rounds, which means if there are five of us, instead of everyone buying their individual drinks, one person will buy five drinks, then the next person will buy five drinks. That's pretty drinks. common over here too. I'm sure many of you are aware of this concept. I'm sure it has a different name where you're from. No. But Same name. a very British thing to do is to shout, whose round is it, when you know exactly whose round it is. So it's a passive aggressive type thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would just be, hey, yo, I'm going to buy the next round. I got the next round. I'll, you know, I'll pick up the next round. Uh, yo, yo, Blake, you got this round. You good? You know, something like that. And you just are trying to make them actually buy their round because there are a lot of people who will participate in rounds wait till last and hope that they won't actually have to buy that round yeah i know those people escaping with a lot of free drinks and a very full wallet and it's very annoying now it's simple if uh if one of my friends doesn't buy rounds and he never buys rounds well i'll just start every time i get around i'll just not buy him a drink screw that man no, most of the time, honestly, I don't care. Whatever. It's just uh, one extra drink, you know, that I have to uh, buy or whatever, but it doesn't really bug me. We can be considered quite passive aggressive. So instead of saying, yes. it's your round, go and buy your round, just shouting, whose round is it? Is a much easier way to avoid confrontation. However, my fiance, he said at university there was one guy who was so bad. At buying or paying for his fair share of drinks that they actually grabbed him marched him to an ATM a bank took his card out and forced him to take out the money damn so I uh that's something too they talk about the passive-aggressive part for those of you that haven't been to the US the East Coast the center of the US for the most part very friendly very very friendly uh, over-the-top friendly to the point that sometimes it irritates the crap out of me too friendly the East Coast, the Northeast specifically, they are aggressive. Straight up, they are aggressive. If they want to tell you something, hey, Jimmy, you need to go buy a round. It's your round. Go buy the damn round, you know? But West Coast, we're very passive aggressive. We would do something like this, <laughs> especially the Northwest. Washington, very, very passive aggressive. Um, hey, yeah, I bought the last round. Who's up? 
uh, yeah, Justin bought two rounds ago, I think. Uh, is it you, Ian, or is it you, Blake? And they know full well whose round it is. Some people are just what we would call here tight. If somebody's tight, or cheap. don't like spending a lot I've of money. I've heard tight, too. Number 14 is we can't always be bothered to use an umbrella. It rains so often that unless it is absolutely pummeling it down, uh, I don't mind getting a bit wet. I agree. I remember when I was in Spain, the minute the first drop hit anyone's hair, they would um, whip out their umbrella. Everyone had it. Everyone knew the weather. I just never knew how people kept See, track of whether it was going to rain that day or not. But it was more of a rare occasion there. And it's very, very common here. So I See, I it rains as much in my section of the U.S. as it does so in, uh, sometimes just in uh, like Great Britain. Number so it's 15. the same thing. We don't put fridges in the eggs. <laughs> Wrong. Number 15. We don't always put our eggs in the fridge. I don't know if this is weird for you. Uh, that's common in most places around the world. When I went to Africa, it was like that. When I went to Australia, it was like that. Um, it's really only the U.S. that's weird in that situation. I don't think it's weird that you guys don't keep eggs in the fridge. I think it's weird that the U.S. does. And, uh, I think the big reason for that is we move so much of our stuff. I'm talking most of our farmland is in the center and then it ends up moving 1500 miles to get to the grocery store for you. So, uh, for that full transport, you're not buying it from your local farmers, uh, you, so you need it to be in the fridge so that it stays good longer, you know? Uh, it's definitely the U.S. that's weird for that, though. Most countries in the world don't put it in the fridge. You, I remember going abroad and seeing fridges in the eggs. Fridges in the eggs. I remember going abroad and seeing eggs in the fridges. Probably to the U.S. fridges arriving with egg holders. I thought that was so yep. weird. No, I like a nice room temperature egg. Oh, yes. <laughs> Why does that sound like Does it movie? matter? You're not going to eat it raw, 16. right? This one goes without saying. We are obsessed with the weather. Even if it's so boring, you know, oh, it's slightly gray and windy today. We will <laughs> tell you that. Ooh, How's the weather? Gray and windy, isn't it? I can see that. <laughs> it does change so much that it is quite, you know, entertaining. We've got, sometimes we don't have that much in our lives to talk about. So the weather is just a really good one to go for. Number 17, scone or scone. Okay, this what? is the conundrum. And actually, there's a part two to this conundrum as well. There is a baked good, which I call a scone, but other people call it a scone. And there's a big, oh, yeah, okay. a big divide in the UK about whether really? it is a scone or a scone. I don't want to get involved in that. I'm not. Listen, I know that the US tends to butcher everything, but as far as I know, everybody that I know over here calls it a scone. Uh, but I mean,. Again, we butcher a lot of words. I'm going to say scone is wrong. But I do think that's good. Scone! Damn it! <laughs> the other part of this conundrum is the order in which you put toppings. Typically, we serve scones or scones uh, with jam and clotted cream. They are absolutely to die for. If you come to the UK, make sure you have... Yeah, but you have to put the jam first. ...with scones or scones. Now, I always put... Clotted cream first, <sighs> then jam. But some people no. swear you have to put the jam first, then the clotted cream. Yes, 100%. I'm not going to tell you which is right. You're just going to have to try it out for yourself. But I think logistically, cream first, then no. jam. Number nope. 18, we are terrible at ending conversations. <laughs> Honestly, this is the most annoying thing ever. There is a huge culprit of this, and it is my fiancé, Will. Typically, when we want to end a conversation, we will say, right, and, and kind of, I need to be heading off, or I must get a move on, or I need to get going. But for some reason, some people really struggle with this. Um, and when you have two people that struggle with ending conversations coming together, well, you could just go on for eternity. It's really, really troubling. Hmm. Okay. Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> Come and say hello. Admit to your problem. This is Will. Don't worry about the face. <laughs> no, you know your problem. You, you're almost perfect. Was it en ending conversations? It was ending conversations. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tricky one. It's fine if you're talking to someone who can end the conversation. It is tricky. I'm with Will. you are with another person that also finds ending conversations difficult. Well, it's nice to get out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, not 
lockdown it's problem. Here for everyone. Me to it. All right, I'm almost done. Cool. Number 19, we really overuse the word sorry. Um, this was further solidified in my mind last night. We watched Bridget Jones. And Before she gets into that, I think that uh, that's an interesting thing. I, I talked to one of my coworkers, and uh, and she says, uh, never say sorry. Sorry makes you look weak, all this type of stuff, right? Um, but I say it all the time. You know, I bump in somebody, oh, sorry. Uh, I cut somebody off. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm helping somebody at work and they, we don't have something. Uh, yeah, sorry. I wish I could help you more. You know, I say sorry all the time. However, I'm extremely confident. I, I, I mean, I, I mean it. I, I feel sorry for them. Like in the sense that, Hey, didn't mean to inconvenience you, but like not sorry in a way of weakness. So it's an interesting thought how, uh, how we both think differently about that. But I, I agree with her. I use it all the damn time. And there was the scene where Mark Darcy or Colin Firth and um, Hugh Grant were fighting and they were knocking over things on people's tables in a restaurant and they were still apologising. We just can't help it. I, I find myself apologising for apologising too much. Number 20, the final weird thing that British people do hmm. um, is consume a lot of pre-made sandwiches. <laughs> it's a bit of a random one. Really? But... There is something very exciting about going on a short car journey and stopping off for lunch. And lunch will be a pre-made sandwich in a box. You can get them from petrol stations or you can get them from supermarkets. See, that's not so weird either. Called a meal deal where for a certain amount of money you get a sandwich, a snack and a drink. And people absolutely love it. And they See, they have those in the U.S. though too. You go, it's a prepackaged uh, sandwich, maybe it's a ham and cheese or a turkey and whatever, or roast beef or I don't know, just different things. And there's even like a tuna one, although I'd never eat the tuna. Try to get the most value from that meal deal. They hmm. say you can tell a lot about a person from what they choose for their meal deal. Yeah, I'd but never I choose know, the tuna. I've traveled to a couple of countries and Ooh, I've look at never that BLT. seen the sheer amount of options for pre-made sandwiches that we have in really? the UK. It's crazy. Every See, I'm looking right now, and what is it? One, two, or no, one, two, three, four, five, looks like six, maybe seven, eight different ones on the screen. That doesn't seem outrageous, you know? We'll have like a Korean barbecue, we'll have like a, a Thai chicken, we'll have, uh, I don't know, just a bunch of different flavors. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know what I thought about that top 20 list. It started out so strong, and, and a lot of things just seem like they're not weird. You just assume that they're weird for British people, but a lot of people do it, or at least Americans do it. And I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. We came from you guys. Uh, well, part of us did. I guess we kind of came from all over, mixing, you know, a whole melting pot. Um, but yeah, I don't know. A lot of these things don't seem strange to me, uh, being an American. But uh, maybe they do to you. Let me know how, what you guys thought of the list, and uh, and uh, we'll talk about it. I try to reply to a lot of my comments, so let me know. Anyway, hope you guys dug it. Till next time, this is Aces High, and I'm out.